speaking to the Health Portfolio uh, Committee, and uh, Dr. Joe Partler uh, was speaking, introducing his team to talk about where we are with the vaccines. Uh, but I want to bring in now uh, Professor Shabir Mahdi, vaccinologist and director of the Vaccines and Infectious Diseases Analytical Research Unit at Wits University. Uh, Prof, good evening, and thank you so much for your time. Let's just first talk about uh, the latest numbers that have come through to us. We know that Mondays are always fairly low, fairly quiet. Tuesday it starts picking up again. Um, but the deaths are still high. I mean, that's gone up very high from yesterday, 369 uh, deaths. We're looking at KwaZulu-Natal leading in terms of infections, followed by the Eastern Cape and then the Western Cape. What are those numbers telling you about how stubborn this third wave is in terms of getting over the peak and down the other side for some provinces? Good evening, Sally. So I think that is correct. But just a word of caution in terms of doing day-to-day -day comparisons when it comes to the number of cases or the number of deaths. The more accurate measurement is sort of a seven-day rolling average, which smooths out some issues with regard to reporting. So I wouldn't be too concerned of the jump from yesterday to today in the number of reported deaths. But on average, that still remains extremely high. What's driving the current uh, cases, as well as deaths, is unfortunately the ongoing uh, resurgence in KwaZulu-Natal, primarily, but as well as in the Free State and the Eastern Cape. Uh, the Western Cape, fortunately, has already peaked and is now on a downward trajectory, including for hospitalization and death. And Gauteng had peaked already about four weeks ago. But unfortunately for KwaZulu-Natal, they're nowhere close to peaking as yet, probably another two to three weeks before they peak. So we're going to see those numbers continuing to increase. And obviously, those numbers are very much an underestimate when it comes to the number of cases uh, because of the modest rate of testing that we do undertake in South Africa. All right. So on, on a more positive note, uh, we've heard from uh, the health ministry, uh, Dr. Joe Partler, the minister, starting off a discussion uh, at the Health Portfolio Committee. Um, and it does seem uh, the good news is that the supply of our vaccine doses is stable. Uh, Dr. Nicholas Chris making the point that at the moment we have 10 million uh, jabs, doses available in the country and there are weekly um, um, doses arriving, J&J &J and Pfizer. Do you think that we can, we can relax now in terms of our supply concerns? Uh, absolutely. I think there's a security of supply, which is really great news. But the next challenge is navigating the next value of death. And the next value of death is where we're currently in South Africa, which is ensuring that we can actually get vaccines into the arms of people. Uh, the type of outreach programs that were implemented in Limpopo and now is being expanded to other provinces where vaccines have been taken to the people will really get us into a fairly favorable position because I strongly believe that the majority of South Africans are wanting to be vaccinated. It's really the minority that are anti-vaxxers or even uh, vaccine hesitant. It's, it's really about access to vaccines. So I think we're on the right path. Uh, but our challenge now is to get at least 80 percent of people above the age of 35 especially are vaccinated by the end of October, because should we experience a resurgence in November, December, we are wanting to have that age group specifically, especially those with underlying medical conditions, adequately immunized so that we don't have massive number of cases of hospitalization and death that transpired during the course of the next resurgence. And I know that uh, the health department is currently outlining uh, what they are doing, first of all, to communicate better uh, with people who might hesitant about the vaccine, but also the practical information about where they can get the vaccine, how they can perhaps get transport uh, to these vaccine sites, um, but also uh, very much about um, registering in the workplaces in bulk, something that was mentioned. Uh, and also this innovative idea, you know, that we actually take the vaccine to the people. As you've said to me before, the issue of access is the real problem. Um, do you think that we can make enough of a difference before the fourth wave hits in December? Uh, absolutely. If we're taking vaccine to the people, if we become targeted, as an example, at the end of each month, if we were just to go to the SASA pay points, we would get closer to 80 percent of people above the age of 60 vaccinated almost immediately. Uh, so we need to look at what opportunities exist where people tend to uh, gather in large numbers or there's high density of people and they have the mobile facilities to uh, dispatch to those areas, uh, including as an example right now, where universities are wanting to uh, reopen. 
uh, we need to make the vaccines available on universities. The same thing goes for workspaces. The mining houses are now beginning to roll out the vaccines uh, as part of their occupational health program. So I think there's great opportunities now that we've got security of vaccine supply to really get it going. But again, we should avoid being detracted from just a number game. It's more than just a number of people that are vaccinated. More important is who is being vaccinated. And these vaccines work uh, modestly against protecting against mild infection and mild disease, but they work phenomenally when it comes to protecting against severe disease and death. And that is the goal of vaccination, to minimize uh, hospitalization and death so that we can get back to a relatively normal lifestyle. It was really interesting. The WHO uh, held their African uh, regional gathering, and Dr. Tedros Ghebreyes is making the point uh, that childhood vaccinations have been neglected, uh, that inevitably, with all the focus on COVID-19, the childhood vaccinations uh, have uh, fallen a little bit behind. He also made the point about polio, which I found quite astonishing, that a year ago, polio was basically eradicated in the wild. And... Um, today, we're seeing more and more cases coming up. Do you think that uh, these issues that, that seem tangential um, around you know, childhood health relating to other vaccines could start to dominate more and more? Uh, well, certainly in the childhood space, absolutely. And I think the biggest threat that we face is undemonization when it comes to a highly contagious uh, virus such as measles. And even in South Africa, we've got only roughly about 75 to 80 percent of children that are adequately immunized against measles, which is way below many other African countries. So we certainly are sitting on a ticking time bomb when it comes to childhood deaths that are, that are due to vaccine preventable conditions uh, because of the impact that uh, our reaction to COVID has had, the collateral damage that it's had when it comes to providing services not just to children but also to pregnant women. Thank you so much for chatting to us this evening, Professor Shabir Mahdi, vaccinologist and director of the Vaccines and Infectious Diseases Analytical Research Unit at Wits University. Here.